Hello and welcome to my Aptera Charging Deep Dive video. Like all of you, I was a little bit upset after the announcement of the launch edition vehicle that it would not have DC fast charging, but I'm now very, very happy that it not only is indeed going to have DC fast charging, but that the DC fast charging may be better than we originally thought. So I thought this would be a good time to go through all the different ways you can charge an Aptera and take a deeper look at the DC fast charging itself. So there are currently five planned ways to charge an Aptera. The first and most important by far is the integrated solar charging which I've covered in previous videos. This could also be called trickle charge or slow charge method. This has two major advantages over other normal EVs. The first being that during the daytime it will constantly be filling up your battery when you're driving and when it is parked. The second big advantage is that it removes a lot of the range anxiety because you know that you will always have access to at least one power source. The full Aptera solar package will deliver around 700 watts of power which is not that much but Aptera is so efficient that this will give it a maximum solar charging rate of 7 miles per hour or 11 kilometers per hour and should be able to produce up to 40 miles per day or 64 kilometers per day depending upon where you live and what time of year it is. Obviously in less sunny regions this is going to be less. The second way will be with plug-in solar. We know that the Aptera will come with a 1.7 kilowatt MPPT tracker so that up to an additional 1 kilowatt of external solar can be added to the Aptera. This will most likely come in the form of fold-out panels that are easy to pack and position and this is probably one of the third party accessories that will be available at launch. This extra solar power is substantial, taking the maximum daily solar mileage from 40 miles with a full 0.7 to a potential of around 97 miles per day under ideal conditions. And this could be a major benefit to people who want to live off grid or for people that live in areas with less sunshine. The third method is type 1 charging. This is normal household socket type charging. Again, the Aptera's efficiency here plays an impressive role. Using my standard examples of the Tesla Model 3 and the Nissan Leaf for comparison, we can see that the Aptera enjoys significant charging speed advantages using a Type 1 charger. Depending on your country, this method varies significantly in speed and power. In the US, you can expect to get 13 miles per hour, that's about 21 kilometers per hour, from a standard 1.5 kilowatt wall socket. In Australia, with a 2.4 kilowatt socket, you should be able to get about 38.4 kilometers an hour, and in the UK, you should be able to get 46 kilometers an hour. And if you live in Europe, then the Aptera owners might be able to get as much as 60 kilometers an hour from a 3.5 8 kilowatt socket. For comparison, a Tesla Model 3 on a 7.2 kilowatt Type 2 wall box charger will get about 44 kilometers an hour, which basically means that there is no need for an Aptera owner to install a Type 2 charger at home, which is awesome because it saves on costs. If however you do wish to install a Type 2 charger then this would be the fourth method of charging and is the most common method to charge a normal EV. This again varies from country to country. In the US, Aptera is planning compatibility with a 6.6 kilowatt power charger. Most likely this will be the same for Australia and the UK. In the EU, according to what they told me via the email, they are still planning on the 11 kilowatt or 22 kilowatt standard but more likely the 11 kilowatt standard as it's simply more common and produces less heat. In terms of numbers you can expect around 50 57 miles an hour or 92 kilometers an hour in the US from the 6.6 kilowatt standard. In the EU this could be as high as 109 miles per hour or 176 kilometers per hour from the 11 kilowatt system or maybe a ludicrous 217 miles an hour 350 kilometers an hour from the 22 kilowatt standard which is faster than most DC superchargers but it seems unlikely to happen at the moment more likely is the 11 kilowatt standard in the EU. And this brings us to the fifth and the most complicated method which is DC fast charging. This method bypasses the AC inverters and allows the battery cells to be pumped directly with DC energy. Originally, the Aptera was intended to have a 50 kilowatt DC fast charge function, but at the Aptera launch edition webinar, it was suddenly dropped from the launch vehicle and predictably, the community went a little bit nuts. But amazingly, unbelievably, the Aptera CEOs did something you rarely see. They admitted that they were wrong. And not only did they do that, but they did a full 180 and they even teased the possibility that DC fast charging might even push beyond 50 kilowatts up to a maximum of 60 kilowatts for the launch edition vehicle if they can get the validation for that. And after that, they announced via email that they were working on a 100 kilowatt version for future Aptera vehicles, presumably for the 600 and 1000 mile versions of the Aptera, but that's not been officially announced. So why is the DC fast charging such a big deal? In short, it turns the Aptera into an epic touring vehicle with almost unlimited range, the likes of which has never really been seen before. Without the DC fast charging, it became more or less a commuter vehicle with only one additional seat, and the range of the 400 mile version would then be limited to essentially 150 mile range 
egregious, which is why so many people got upset. But the DC fast charging function is complex, so for argument's sake, let's take a deeper look compared to other EVs to see exactly what's going on. DC fast charging is very powerful, but it creates a lot of excess heat which all manufacturers struggle to deal with. To tackle with this problem, they either choose to charge at ultra high speeds for a very short period of time, or quite fast speeds for a much longer period of time. The 400 mile version of the Aptera is slated to handle between 50 and 60 kilowatts when compared to the current fastest charging EV, the Porsche Taycan, that can connect to a 300 kilowatt charger, then the 40 to 60 kilowatts of the Aptera seems a little bit limited. But the DC fast charging power is only half the story, as it does not consider how far that vehicle can go with every kilowatt hour of energy. Because of the Porsche Taycan's frankly pathetic combined EPA efficiency rating of 412 watt hours per mile, the Porsche marketing team needed to be able to say that the Taycan can charge at extreme speeds to make it an even slightly competitive product. As a result, Porsche loved to point out that you can connect the Taycan to a 300 kilowatt DC charger, which is true, it can. What they are less fond of pointing out is that there are not many 300 kilowatt DC chargers and that the Taycan cannot charge at a rate of 300 kilowatts. Its peak charging rate is 262 kilowatts, which it can only maintain for a couple of minutes at most, after which point the batteries get too hot and the speed starts to drop off dramatically. So the maximum charge rate number is sadly almost irrelevant for anything other than marketing. Because DC fast charging is mostly used to completely refill a battery, the more meaningful charge rate number is the average charge rate between 20% and 80% state of charge. For the Taycan, this is only 150 kilowatts on average, which is only 57% of its peak charging rate. Similarly, the current Tesla Model 3 long range peaks at 195 kilowatts, but averages only 128 kilowatts, which equates to 66% of their peak rate. It's interesting to note here that the previous versions of the Tesla Model 3 peaked at 250 kilowatts, but averaged only 106 kilowatts overall, which makes this trade-off between peak rate and sustained rate very clear. But most interesting for Aptera owners is perhaps the Audi e-tron. Its DC charge cycle peaks at 155 kilowatts, much lower than the others, but importantly it can maintain this speed for a lot longer. It averages 149 kilowatts, which is 96% of its peak rate. This pattern is relevant for Aptera because there is a trend here. Lower charging rates allow for much easier battery heat management. By not pushing the batteries too hard early on, less heat is generated and a higher charge rate can be maintained for longer. Essentially, they are swapping high initial speed for faster average speed, which in turn is much more useful in the real world for longer journeys. Because Aptera was aiming for an even lower peak charge rate, Aptera fans can expect the Aptera to handle the 50 kilowatts with no problem at all. This brings us back to the importance of efficiency and that is where Aptera is formidable and why so many of us think the DC fast charging is so important, even for an SEV. Using the EPA combined cycle as our reference, the 22 to 80% DC average charge rate for the Taycan achieves only 366 miles per hour, or 588 kilometers per hour, which is almost half of the 1,000 kilometers an hour that is often quoted in the online media. The Tesla achieves around 493 miles per hour, which is 793 kilometers an hour, and although the e-tron charges at a lower peak rate and it has a lower EPA efficiency than the Tesla, it achieves an average refill rate of 375 miles per hour, 604 kilometers per hour, which is faster than the Porsche Taycan can and not far off the Tesla. The Aptera by comparison will be almost three and a half times more efficient than the Taycan, meaning that for every kilowatt hour it can take the vehicle three and a half times further. Using 96% of the 50 kilowatt DC charge rate based on vehicles with similar sized batteries gives us a potential average charging rate for the Aptera of 48 kilowatts. At this power the Aptera should be able to average an incredible 477 miles per hour or 768 kilometers per hour charge rate which would make it one of the fastest charging EVs on the market and way ahead of the Porsche Taycan. It can charge at the same speed as a Tesla but at one third of the energy cost. On top of that, it can then outrange almost every EV on the road, and on top of that, the solar would then stretch its range even further. In practical terms, this means that with DC fast charging, the 400 mile Aptera could potentially refill 350 miles of range in just under 45 minutes, which means that extreme journeys of 700 or even 1000 miles are possible with just a couple of normal meal and charge stops. And then there's the 100 kilowatt DC fast charging Aptera, would charge at a colossal peak of 1000 miles per hour or 1600 kilometers per hour. And if it can maintain this average charge rate, that would cut the 350 mile charge time in half to around 23 minutes, which is barely enough time for a coffee. That being said, my gut tells me that the 100 kilowatt version will be reserved for the 600 and 1000 mile Apteras that can spread the load much 
stretch more evenly over more battery cells. The icing on the cake here is that 100 kilowatts is actually not that much compared to other EVs on the road, which is great for two reasons. Firstly, it means that the Aptera can charge at extremely fast rates, even at the lower end DC fast charging stations around the world that have been around for years, which is an enormous advantage. And secondly, because 100 kilowatts is not that much compared to other EVs, even with their skin cooling solution, Aptera should be able to maintain a very high average charge rate, which would make it one of, if not the fastest charging electric vehicle in the world. So it looks like that not only are epic journeys back on the table for Aptera fans, but they just got a major boost as well, which is amazing because I'd already planned my first epic journey with my Aptera. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below where you are planning to take your Aptera on your first long journey. Remember, if you want to reserve the now incredible Aptera, then please use the link below. That will save you $30 off the $100 reservation fee, which is totally refundable. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. Thanks guys, and I will see you next time.